Hello everyone, Shane here with ROA Off-Road. Today, I'm going to be doing a full tour of the all new, highly anticipated Roamer 1. We've been talking about this going on almost two years now. If you've been following us, thank you so much. If you're brand new, welcome. This is an exciting, monumental moment for us here at ROA Off-Road. Imperial Outdoors from Wisconsin has built an incredible trailer and it's standing behind me. And they've done a private label for ROA Off-Road as the Roamer One. There are so many details that have gone into this trailer. And I just wanna say we're so grateful towards Imperial Outdoors for the hard work and the efforts that they have made to actually bring this trailer to market. Of course, they have the Explore X195. At the bones and the construction of it, the Roamer One is very similar to the X195. And a lot of people ask us, what are the differences? And the best way I like to explain it is it's kind of like a Ford Mustang GT and a Ford Mustang Shelby. The Ford Mustang GT would be the Explore X195, which is an incredible performance vehicle. It's made for off-road, off-grid. This is the Shelby Mustang. So it's an exclusive or a labeled by ROA Off-Road. And essentially the trailer comes to us almost complete. It's not entirely complete. It goes into our shop and then we put some finishing touches on it. Everything you see on this tour today comes standard and that's what makes it the Roamer One and I'm super excited to go into tons and tons of detail for you today. We do have some short tours of this. We have some adventure videos of this that you can go check out but today this is going to be a long tour with tons and tons of detail. If you're interested in this trailer this is a video you're going to want to watch. There is a lot to talk about this trailer. And Imperial Outdoors has done an amazing job in building these new trailers for 2023. Obviously, we're especially excited about the Roamer One, even though the X195 and the 145 share a lot of the same things. They're incredible trailers, all of them. The whole lineup is amazing. And some of the things that make them best in class is the insulation. The Roamer One, it's two and five eighths inches thick. It's an unbelievably thick wall. It's a composite material on the inside and outside. It's a fiberglass and it has a carbon fiber backing that it's laid into and a high density foam core. So the insulation properties of this is superb. Rated for 40 below zero. The cool thing about insulation is it's good both ways. Whether you're going into sub zero or you're going above 100 degrees, it's going to work the same both ways. The insulation is best in class. Now moving over this way, right over here we have an outside outlet. I like this outlet because if I want to charge and work on some stuff. And these max tracks are mounted to this cargo box area which I really like. On the top of this, you can put some jerry can holders. There's also a mounting molly board right here. But inside the cargo box, there's lots of space for storage. Everything you see on this trailer comes with the trailer. We like to call it kind of turnkey. Uh, the idea is when you get here, you pick up your trailer. We want it set up where you can go out and just camp immediately. And so you have everything. You have your filters, your regulators, even some camp chairs that they come with. These are really cool camp chairs. But in here you have lots of space and this is sealed up really well. We've been off-roading all weekend long and there's no dirt in here at all. It is very clean beautiful space you can put you know tools and stuff in here and you have an outlet right next to it so you can charge them up if you needed to 
Obviously with the dust, it will also keep the snow out if you're in a snowy climate opposed to a desert climate. And you don't have to keep your chairs in, you can take your chairs out and you can put snowshoes in. Essentially, you can utilize it for whatever your adventure is. Here, I wanna show off the cam lock. I really like these. If you rotate them, you can kind of see they suck in almost a quarter to a half an inch. And it just gives you that better airtight to keep the dust and snow out. Also, this box is extremely strong. We went through a tunnel situation where we were centimeters away from scraping the roof. And so we had over 500 pounds of dudes dangling on this. Michael was standing up and trying to lift the ceiling, which wasn't working. And we were just trying to squish the suspension to get through a little obstacle. It was pretty madness. We were shocked how much weight that thing can hold and it didn't bend it or anything. The thing that I love about the Romer one is obviously it's designed for any adventure, whether you're down in the desert, hot climates, whether you're up in the mountains, cold climates, it's really designed for your adventure no matter where you go. Now let's talk about the tires. I actually really like these tires. The first time I learned about these tires was actually the previous year models, the X22s, the Explorers by Imperial. He put the Razor MT on those and he switched to Razor 80 for the Romer one, which I actually prefer. It's probably a little bit better for towing and it's a trailer anyway. I used to run Nittos on my personal truck and I feel like I wore them out quite frequently. The Maxxis Razors, I've switched onto my personal vehicle and I like it because it matches now my trailer and my truck. <laughs> but I've been really happy with the way they wear. They wear really well. Maxxis are the only tire that I'm aware of that gives warranties on their mud terrain tire. Phenomenal company, phenomenal tires too. On every roamer, you get a tire pressure monitoring system and it will actually monitor your PSI and the temperature. And we also have one on your spare tire. That's happened to me before where I actually had a flat, I pulled out my spare and I put it on and it just, it had a leak. So you'll know whether your spare is good and your tires as you're driving. Now down here, we have a mount that's designed for a high lift jack. It's just there mounted. We don't necessarily include it just because with four wheels on the ground, it's pretty easy to roll one wheel up off the ground to be able to change the tire. We're showing this off-roading all the time where we're lifting off one tire. Back here we have our recovery hooks. And you might want to go check out our TikTok and uh, Instagram account because we, we actually put out totally different content on that. And some of that content is like the stuff before what you see on YouTube because YouTube takes a long time to get stuff out. But we were up in the mountains and I tried to run my truck through an embankment and I wasn't fully committed. I should have went faster and I got stuck. And so my camera guy, Jordan, behind me, he had to hook up some straps to this and yank the entire truck and trailer out of that embankment. So I know they're strong and I know they can, they come in handy. Just the other day, I was on our first real big roamer adventure, off-roading adventure. Michael pulled into this mud pit and just went into this deep snow and got stuck. And well, I hooked up onto that deer ring and yanked them backwards. So definitely really cool if you're gonna be going out and doing the stuff that we do. Also on every Romer one, it comes equipped with a Furion backup camera. And I think this is really important. People don't realize cameras are not required to be on the back of a trailer. It's kind of funny is because now in the automotive industry, they require, it's the law that you have cameras on cars, backup cameras for safety. And the funny thing is it's not required on a trailer to have a backup camera, but Backing up a trailer is 10 times harder and way less safe than a car, right? And if you don't have somebody to back you up, this thing is a lifesaver. Now, if you do have somebody to back you up, it actually has a speaker built into it so they can actually talk to you and say, hey, slow down, you got about two feet more. So it's really cool that we've included that in the Roamer One. One of my favorite things on the Roamer One is actually underneath the trailer, it is the independent a-arm suspension so there is no axle there's no leaf springs that is the standard setup that you're going to see on most trailers is leaf springs with solid axles 
And trust me, I hear people going off-roading all the time and bending axles. That's pretty common. Leaf springs are the roughest ride that you can have on any trailer. It's so funny, I was actually at a museum looking at some buggies, like horse carriages, and they use the same type of leaf springs that you'll see on a travel trailer in today's age from the 1800s so uh, to me it's like come on let's get up to the times nowadays almost all cars and nicer vehicles are all moving to an independent suspension because it's just a much more superior ride than anything else obviously those off-road puritans solid axles are going to be really good for articulating but that's not what you're using a trailer for for the most part you're going to be hitting washboards and you want those suspensions to move independently you want the impact of the rough road hitting the suspension, not the box of the trailer. And with the ATX four independent suspension arms with airbags and gas shocks with reservoirs, you also have limiting wires. So it's not gonna overextend, but this thing has over six inches of travel up and down as you're off-roading and hitting washboards. And when you get to camp, the cool thing about the airbags is you're able to level side to side. While you're off-roading, you can clear an obstacle by going into the max height. And while you're towing, you can lower it down and have a better towing experience. By the way, this trailer tows amazing it's one of the best towing trailers i've ever towed in my entire life and to top it off cruise master gives you the option of drums for your brakes or disc brakes the roamer one has been optioned with electric over hydraulic disc brakes and these things grab so good for off-roading on-roading they're really superb the next thing i want to talk about is this aluminum extrusion and it also has an integrated t-track in it so this is what holds the walls together the construction so they actually slide into these channels and there are no studs in the walls which i think is really really important it's a one piece composite that's almost three inches thick but these tracks that hold the whole walls together this is a proprietary t-track system we have the bolts where you can slide in and this is extremely modular so you can actually put in different gear so if you want to put a Starlink. Of course, we have Starlink, so wait for a second and I'll show you that. But even if you wanted to put a flagpole, a lot of people will, what they'll end up doing is drilling holes into their walls, which is just, it's not good for potential leakage long term. So instead, what you can do is you can mount stuff to here and put a flagpole. I know our military guys, they love to put up their flagpoles when they get to camp. And then up here, I want to show you one that we've included on every Roamer one is this guy right here. And this was rated for 2,000 pounds of force, which I don't think you're ever gonna use that. But this right here is for the awning because the awning loops out, it's a 270. And we put an attachment point right there so you can attach it really easily. And there's also another one on the front that attaches the entire awning in the out position, which is really nice and easy so you're not trying to find a place to mount it. The trailer also comes with a handy dandy ladder and it's super light aluminum ladder and that's included so you can get up to the top of your awning to set it up or if you need to get to the front cargo box above it to put your bikes up, it's always convenient or you can use it to get in the back of your truck. This is a super light convenient ladder. It's rated for 330 pounds. Let's head on over to the driver's side now. So over here, I wanna talk a little bit about, this is an exhaust or a tank vent. Over here, we have the Truma. This is a phenomenal unit. This is the Eco Plus combi unit. So it duels as your water heater and your furnace. So I've had my Roamer One unit, which I own personally. It's the very first one ever. I've had it parked at my house and taking it out camping and I've left the heater on and it lasted on two 20 pound propane tanks, which I'll show you later, for 24 days. That's camping. I've taken multiple showers. Most of the time it was parked just outside of my house, but I had the heat turned up because I had water in the tanks and I didn't want it to freeze. And it's been ranging anywhere from single digits to high 30s, probably mid 30s. So it is the middle of winter. It's February here in Utah and 24 days. I was shocked to know it almost lasted a month on two smaller 
20 pound propane tanks. That to me is superb. And it is a three stage, so it has a variable span speed. There's actually up to 10 speeds on the fan, but it actually will output a lot of heat or it will slow the speeds, which also slows the, the amperage and the power consumption. It goes all the way from 7,000 BTUs all the way up to over 20,000 BTUs on the forced heating and air. Coming down here, I wanna show off these new stabilizer jacks. In most cases, these are stabilizer jacks but these will actually lift the entire trailer. It's rated for 1,920 pounds, so you can lift the entire trailer off of this. One of the cool things that the trailer comes standard with is an electronic leveling system from your phone where you can monitor and see if it's level or not. So while you're driving and you get into camp, you can pull out your phone and you can check to see where it's level, the pitch and the camber, and then you can try to find an area that's pretty level. If you're off grid, you can drive around and get your trailer as level as possible. And then when you get out of the truck and you unhook, you drop the tongue. Of course, this is airbag system, so you can level side to side. You can bring the bags down immediately. You just come out and press a button and watch this. So you'll level this way and you'll be able to really get the trailer perfectly level. And then the jacks, you drop those down. And if you need to adjust it a little bit, you can lift the entire trailer's weight with these legs. At 1,920 pounds, you have close to 8,000 pounds with all four of the jacks down. And if you got in a situation where you did get a flat or a blowout, you could jack the entire trailer up with two on one side and get the tire off the ground to be able to change the tire. So there's a lot of options between the high lift jack, between using the stabilizer jacks or driving up on a rock to get one tire off the ground. I love those jacks, standard jacks that you'll see on most trailers, off-road trailers. They use the cheaper ones that are only rated for a few hundred pounds, and they're really only designed to stabilize the trailer so it doesn't wobble as much. We had this trailer out just the other day in 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts all night long, and I was shocked in how stable the trailer felt with these jacks all in the down position holding the trailer. Moving over to here, I wanna talk about this. Underneath the snow here, there's a wheel fender and it is metal. A lot of times you'll look at trailers and you'll notice they're completely plastic. You have a blowout and this whole thing just gets shredded to pieces. That's not gonna happen. Everything in here is all metal. So very strong, very robust. Moving over to here, the windows, they are a dual pane polycarbonate Eurovision. These windows are very strong. A lot of people say, well, why plastic windows and not glass windows? Well, in an off-roading scenario, we have hit these windows with tree branches. Uh, just recently, we actually hit these with some tree branches. I've actually thrown baseballs and rocks at these windows to see if they would hold up. And I was super impressed every single time. Well, the rock actually did end up breaking one of the windows, but it was a massive rock. But baseballs, tree branches, these are gonna be way stronger. I think the brake resistance is like over a hundred times stronger than glass. So in an off-roading scenario, polycarbonate windows are gonna be better. Also the dual pane properties make it better for insulation as well. Okay, now let's move into our uh, water compartment. This is also could be considered a wet bay. I do wanna point out these doors. These doors are massively thick. The walls are almost three inches, so you need doors that get close to matching the thickness of the walls, but they also have one, two, and three seals. We have been off-roading, mudding, this compartment area, if it wasn't getting sealed properly, would be full of mud and dirt because we have been going at it hard for the entire week. This whole area, this is called the Nautilus. This is the P4 option. And what I really like about this, with the trailer, the most important thing to us is we want it to be easy to use. For us, our mission isn't to sell lots of trailers, it's to get a lot of people to go out camping and enjoy this beautiful country we live in. And the better designed trailers out on the market, they allow you to be able to get out more often. And as we go through the Romer one, I'll point out a lot of things, and this is the whole thought process behind 
everything we've done with the Roamer One is trying to make it easy for you to go out and camp. Because if you buy a trailer and you don't camp, you might as well not buy one. The whole purpose is to get out and camp and enjoy it. And this system right here is one of the easiest systems to use. These valves right here, they allow you to change to whatever you need to do. So you have your inlet where you're gonna put your garden hose through and you're gonna fill up your tanks. And you have right here, power fill tanks. So you just follow these knobs right here. So you go there, there, and there and then you fill up your tanks. And when you get out to camping, you go to dry camping, which means you're not hooked up to any water and you're just gonna turn those, so those up, these over, this down, and there you're dry camping. Winterizing, obviously you don't wanna waste propane and if you say, hey, I'm not gonna actually camp in it for three months or two months or even a month and I don't wanna be wasting my propane. So what you would do is you would put in a hose in here and drop it into the bottle of antifreeze. This is winterizing antifreeze designed for plumbing. And then you just change it to these valves, right? You put the blue and the white together and you put those away. You turn on the pump right here because you have an outside pump. It's a two-way pump. You can turn on your water pump outside or inside and then you suck in the antifreeze and you're done. It's super easy. I love, love this system. It's one of the easiest systems to work. We also have an outside shower and I'll show you how that works. It has a quick connect right there. And obviously we, like I said, turn on the pump and let's turn on the shower and there you go. And that's cold water. If I want, I can turn on hot water. Ooh, yeah. Nice, nice and warm. I don't know if you can see it steaming. It's steaming. Do you see it steaming? Ooh, it's melting that snow really fast. So you have uh, outside hot and cold water. And you can clean off the trailer. You have a dog, you have boots, and that's on a shower. If you want it on stronger, you can change it to different ones. There's jet. Now I can spray off my muddy tires. <laughs> Pretty nice. And that's all with hot water too, which is awesome. And if you wanted to install an outside shower on the T-Track system, which that's what it's designed for, and then you just disconnect it, let the water run out. You gotta release the pressure of this so it runs out. And then you just store it in right here. One of the things that I wanna talk about is the air system. This is the Cruise Master airbag tank system and you do have a tank drain so you can push this and you can drain out the air. You also have a line out for your air so if you wanted to air up bicycles or a raft or your tires. This has also a compressor with a tank, an auxiliary tank. So it will fill up the tank and it will push out a lot of air really fast for the first little bit. And I've actually aired up my truck tires with this and this airs up faster than one of those cheap pumps that you go into a gas station that you put quarters in. It's a pretty good pump. And then you turn it on right there. You can have this remote that you leave in the trailer and that actually controls your air from side to side. Right here we have a button. This is called a macerator and this is for the gray tank system. The gray tank, it's essentially like a blender at the exit of the trailer and it actually is pressurized too. It's a pump. You get lots of hair into the drain or gunk, little kids, muddy feet. It goes down into the tank and people don't realize gray tanks over time can get full and that the macerator is supposed to take it and suck it out and chop it up and make sure it leaves. And the exit of the gray tank is a standard garden hose. So you can get a 100 foot garden hose also and you can run it away from you and you can turn it on and push the water through and it's pressurized, right? So you could put it in the upstairs of your house into your toilet, your bathtub and drain it out. It's really convenient because sometimes when you pull into a campground and you want to drain your gray tank, you have to line the trailer up perfectly to have one of those slinkies reach. You don't have to. With this trailer you can have it 100 feet away or 10 or 20 or whatever you want and just pump it out and talking about the tanks both tanks the fresh water and the gray water tank are 60 gallons of water so you have a tremendous amount of water for your fresh water and also your gray tank to hold your dirty water there is no black tank and i'll talk to you later when we get inside the trailer about it but it's really good to have a large water capacity because it helps you to get off grid and stay off grid longer. So moving over here, I wanna talk a little bit about the Furion. This is a 30 amp plug. So if you do have a generator or you are at a campground, you can plug it in. 
Now I'll get more into some of the components and electrical stuff inside the trailer. The trailer comes equipped with a 1080 amp hours of lithium battery and 1240 watts on the roof. This is standard, there's no other options. So it's fully loaded with power, battery and solar. It's pretty unbelievable. Now I have been using this trailer unlike any trailer I've ever used almost in my life is because usually I'm always trying to conserve on my battery. This trip, we've been out for almost a week and I have not tried to conserve at all. We have been just plugging in, charging things, running Starlink 24 seven around the clock, which typically when I'm out camping and I run a Starlink, I typically will turn it off because it uses about six or so amps per hour. So you're running 130 amps of Starlink in a 24 hour period. So that's a lot of power. This week, since we've been out, we've used over four to 500 amps just to operate Starlink 24 seven around the clock, which I wouldn't recommend. I would usually turn it off at night and not run all that power for no reason, but we still have battery life, even though we have been trying to put a freaking drain on these batteries like crazy. But but if you did want to opt to get a generator for backup power, there are a lot of times people are like, what size of generator do I need? Because you're like, well, to run the AC, it's this many BTUs, so you need at least this much. Plus generators, the higher elevation you go, the less power they actually give you. But with this, it wouldn't matter the size of the generator. The air conditioning is a 12 volt unit, so it runs purely off of your batteries. So the only reason why you would buy a generator is to charge your batteries. You would not buy a generator to actually operate anything in the trailer because everything in the trailer from the air conditioning to the refrigerators to any outlet, you can turn on the inverter and you can operate everything completely off grid using the batteries and the solar panels. So the only reason why you would use this outlet is to charge your batteries if you're doing some crazy usage or if you pull into a campground and you wanna charge your batteries, you can plug it in there too. Above it, we have a port for solar. If 1240 watts is not enough solar on the roof, which it might not be, quite frankly, we have not been in the best of conditions. We've been mudding and we've sprayed up tons of mud over the solar panels. So a good day or two, we were not getting any solar. I went up there and tried to clean them off and I took the solar from like 100 watts to over 500 watts just by cleaning off the mud on the panels and I couldn't even reach the center ones. And then it snowed and so we got snow on the panels. So we've been in really, really poor conditions to be trying to test out the batteries in the solar system because we've had very, very, very bad sun and the panels have been covered more often than not. Right here, I wanna point out something. This is a Romer One exclusive. So you're not gonna get this on any other trailer and you're not just not gonna get this on any other trailer from ROA, but you can't get it on any trailer in the world because we've designed this setup and this is for Starlink. If you're interested in Starlink, you've looked at Starlink, it's a really cool system made by SpaceX or Elon Musk. Essentially it's internet anywhere, anywhere anywhere in America, you go out into the boondocks, you go into a canyon and you're gonna get high speed internet. You don't need a satellite anymore, no dish, no direct TV, no cell boosters. The Starlink will operate everything. The issue with Starlink is there's nothing that's been built that actually creates a, a through system where you can plug in the unit and plug it on the inside. So a lot of people are plugging their Starlink modems outside and like on an outlet on the outside of their trailer, or they're putting it in their trailer in the dish outside and they're running it through the window, cracking a window, but they're leaving it open all night and during the day. And it's really, it's kind of a silly nuisance. So we've designed in-house a connection that actually goes through. So you can plug in the Starlink on the outside. You can put the dish outside and I'll show you how it works really quick. You get to wherever you're going and you're gonna put your dish outside. And then this plug that we've designed and built with this system, you're gonna plug it in right there. And the modem is actually underneath the bed inside the trailer and it has an outlet and it has the other side of that plug plugged in. The second you plug that satellite in, immediately we're gonna have internet in less than 60 seconds. The modem kicks on and my phone will connect to the Wi-Fi, just like I'm walking into my house 
and I'll have high speed internet. And this is something that you're only going to be getting on the Roamer one and no other trailer on the market whatsoever. I absolutely am a huge fan of Starlink just because when I'm off grid a lot, I want to be able to be in contact with my family, my friends. And this is the easiest system set up for Starlink that I've ever seen. I've been running it through the window. And it's really important because when I'm off grid, I wanna be connected. I also need to work. For those people who wanna work remotely, it's the best system. And that's kind of the theme of the Roamer One is we wanted to have everything set up where you just go out and camp and have fun. You don't have to worry about how do I plug this in? Where do I plug it in? Do I put the wire through the window or through the door? And then obviously if you're constantly slamming this in a door, it's gonna ruin the wire over time. So just wanted to make this really turnkey where you're just ready to go out and camp and have fun. Now let's get talking about some of the specs on this trailer. The overall length on the Roamer One is 26 feet and one inch. And that's from the tip of the hitch to the very back of the box of the trailer. Now with the cargo box and the tires, you're gonna add about another 16 inches. So you're gonna be about 27 and a half feet overall. And that's with all your gear and stuff included. Your total width, and this is from fender to fender, it's 91 inches wide. So it's gonna track really well behind your tow vehicle. If you're going on forest roads, it's not as wide as a lot of trailers on the market, but it's designed purposefully to go on narrow roads. The overall height from the highest point is nine foot, nine inches. The clearance on the underbelly for off-roading is gonna range anywhere from 21 to 24 inches. And this is gonna be variant on your air suspension because obviously you have just over six inches of travel that you can higher and lower, but over 21 inches at the lowest point anywhere on this trailer. Your dry weight is 6,880 pounds and that is fully loaded and that's with all the stuff that I've showed you so far. In the back cargo box, you saw those hoses and filters and everything. As we walk around this trailer, as I show you everything from the tools, the equipment, the gear, we have shovels, we have axes, all of those things are included in that weight. So it's 6,880 pounds completely loaded. Now the GVWR is just under 10,000 pounds, 9,920 pounds is what the axles are rated for or the control arms. So you have over 3,000 pounds of cargo capacity, which I absolutely would not recommend you doing. You're not gonna be over 1,000 pounds when you fully load this with water and gear. And so one of our biggest goals was to be able to keep this trailer within the range of a Raptor or a TRX to be able to tow it with those vehicles. Obviously an F-150, any type of 1500 Chevy GM or even a Toyota Tundra is going to be suitable for towing the Roamer One. Over here we have our storage compartment and on the Roamer One, you have about, about two feet of storage right here. There's also a light at nighttime, you need to get in here. This is the back side of the kitchen. So as you can see, it doesn't go all the way through. There is some space on the sides though. If you wanted to put some long poles, these are poles for the awning. So you can slide in some long stuff in there and then have some extra space to put miscellaneous gear. Another thing that I love about the Romer One is all the keys to the compartments and the door are all matching keys. So you have one key that opens up every single compartment. And that includes even these front compartments all the way around the entire trailer. You have the same key, one key, works everything. It's silly to say, but most trailers don't do that. Most trailers will have multiple keys, sometimes a dozen keys. Moving up here in this storage compartment, this is a very large storage compartment. As you can see, the entire length of it is this ladder. And this ladder, like I mentioned, comes with the unit. There's a lot of things that we throw in the unit as stock. This is a torque wrench for your tires. And in the manual, there's all the information on what you should be torquing your lugs at. But most people have to go out and buy a torque wrench. We include that in the Romer One because 
Once again, I've said this and I'm gonna keep on saying it. We want it to be convenient for you to get in the trailer and go and camp, right? A lot of people are like, what tools do I need? What are some important tools? Where a really important tool is an electrical tester. And so we include this with you because we have a Romer tech line. And when you get a Romer one with us, you have some exclusive access that you wouldn't on any other trailer to support and service. I believe we give really good support to all of our campers and trailer owners, but to the Romer one, it's a little bit step above because our name's on it. Obviously we're gonna do a lot more for it, but we put our names on everything that we send out the door. Sometimes if there's an issue, it's just as simple as checking this and this to see if there's maybe an electrical issue. You can call in or text into our tech line and he can sometimes walk you through and teach you how to use this. And we actually have a video, a private video for our roamers only on how to function one of these. We always wanna warranty and service and take care of you here or over the phone. But the more and more you know, the more empowered you are to go out and use it and do it all yourself. That's a good spot for you to be in. I mentioned earlier about the air compressor. It comes with this tool so you can actually see the pressure and a hose. I was actually airing up my tires on my truck the other day with this. And also you can just air up anything else you need. There's some other goodies in here. I wanna show everything, but I'm not going to. But I mentioned tools. It's really important is that you have a great tool set and this gives you everything you'll ever need to work on your Romer one you have your entire tool set here we wanted to get you out and camping and not having to deal with this stuff yourself moving forward to me this is an essential tool this is your unfriendly neighbor tool. No, I'm just kidding. Don't, don't dislike that. That is a joke. Anyway, there's an ax. That's for firewood, not your unfriendly neighbor. Uh, but it's included in the Romer one. Moving up to here, these are actually steps. And as you can see, they're on both sides. This entire front cargo box area is all aluminum. So it's very light and everything from the cargo box down to the frame is an E coat primer, a heavy duty powder coating. So it's really good scratch resistance, obviously, Nothing is indestructible, but it is very heavy duty. It's one of the best powder coatings you can use. But these steps that I was mentioning earlier get you up to this cargo box area, which we have a bike mounting system where you can mount two bicycles up here, mountain bikes, or designing one that will go into the T-tracks and into this area where you could potentially put four mountain bikes if you're a family of four and you need more space. Moving up, we have a light bar and that thing is unbelievably bright. We have been doing a lot of off-roading. We were in the snow. We were actually off-roading just the other night in the dark with both of the Romer ones that we have at our facility. And we lit the whole trail up with those light bars. We also have rock lights underneath. And as we were going over obstacles, we were able to see all the clearance, the departures. We scraped a little bit of everything on that trail. It was a Jeep trail and it was pretty intense. One of the things I do want to talk about the Romer one on the front of this, this actually lights up when you plug it into the truck and as you're driving at night, it will illuminate and it's pretty cool if you've seen those new Mercedes Broncos, they have the front grill, it actually illuminates. It's not super bright, but as you're driving down the road, you see it and it's really, really cool. The company that actually is designed and made these for the Romer one, they are the same company that builds the new Ford Bronco emblems as well. So very high quality automotive grade designed to turn on while you're driving down the freeway. Right here we have your tongue jack and this is made by Arc. This is an Australian company. What's cool about this is it has wheels on the bottom. So if you were to put this in the highest position and you were to get stuck and you need to recover your trailer. Sometimes you get wedged into a spot. We were uh, not too long ago wedged into a spot where my truck couldn't move forward and the trailer was jackknifed. So we unhooked, we're able to back it a little bit, unhook and shimmy my truck out. And then we put this into the lowest position and we hooked up chains and pulled it out of the spot we were in. We got ourselves unstuck. We also include on every Romer one a foot that slides into this. So you have more support. So you're not just sitting on the wheel and putting all the torque on that jockey wheel. We have used hundreds and hundreds of these so we know how to operate this properly. And when you come and do a walkthrough, we'll teach you how to do all that as well. The other nice function of this is when you lift it up, it actually swivels out of the way completely 
and you have total clearance. And it's important because if you have a standard jack that's just hanging down, those tend to be, get knocked off if you're going down into washes. We were going through some washes with the Romer 1 just the other day, and as we're dropping down, we were scraping the bottom of the ball on the truck. But if this was actually in the down position, we would have been scraping, knock that whole thing off. So this swivels completely out of the way, and it's above the bottom of the frame. Now, speaking of the frame, it is one fourth inch closed tube steel. And it has these extra weld plates right here to reinforce the actual frame. The other important thing is Imperial, as they've done the frame, they've actually sent it to get laser cut. So it's always precise. It's the same all the time. And that's one of the things he's really tried to do is eliminate the human error in manufacturing. So you get that consistency. And so they laser cut and then they interlock the actual frame together and weld it in after it's locked in. So you take out the human air and use more machinery to make it very precise all the time. Moving up to this area, I wanna talk about the articulating hitch. This is a cruise master and it's all integrated into your brake system. As you can see right here, it says fitted with a genuine cruise master suspension. Part of that also is the hitch. And this is the DO45, and it has a handbrake integrated that you can pull out and lock your tires so you don't have to throw out chocks or blocks or rocks. Very convenient. And then this hitch will go into your truck. And when you come to pick up the Roamer one, we'll talk with you ahead of time to make sure we get you the right setup that matches your truck. We're always making sure when you come in here, you're ready to pull away and go camping and have fun. What's so important about this hitch is when you get it on the truck, it gives you the ability to articulate 360 degrees. And what that is, is when you're on a camber situation, if the trailer's moving to the right and the truck is moving to the left, that's what that is for. And then if you go into washes, you have this ability to go up and down. And of course, you're never gonna get in a situation where your truck is straight up or straight down. If you are, bless your soul, <laughs> hopefully you're okay. Of course, the standard seven pin, American, and then your safety chains over here. So moving over to this side of the trailer, we throw in a shovel and these Molly boards right here, you can mount other stuff. This is just what we're standard putting. And what's funny is I actually got in a situation where we kind of got wedged in and we pulled the shovel out and dug ourselves out and got free. As silly as it may seem, it's very important that you have all the proper equipment when you're going off-roading, when you're camping, especially if you're gonna go off-grid and get to places where you're gonna need certain tools like this. Okay, and over here, I mentioned the propane tanks. When we got the trailers in, I was a little bit concerned because I'm thinking, how long is 20 pounds going to last? Now, what's really cool is Imperial, they really know insulation more than anybody else. And with almost three inch thick walls, dual pane windows with a very, very efficient Truma. The Truma is made, engineered out of Germany. One of the best water heater systems I've ever used. And I, like I mentioned, 24 days on two tanks. Two or so of those weeks were just parked at my house, but with the heat running. And the other week or so was me out camping, showering, using hot water, washing my hands, and heating the trailer. Anywhere from single digits to 30 degrees during almost three weeks. I mean, we almost lasted a month, which is superb. We have some extra propane line here, and the reason for that is this is for a quick disconnect to hook up your kitchen, and we'll get to that in just a second. But I just wanted to show off this track, which is really nice and convenient and then you can shut this door, but let's move on over to the kitchen now. Moving on, I want to talk about one of my favorite features on the Romer One. To me, one of the funnest things about camping is camp food, eating, cooking, especially when you can do it outside in nature. It makes just the experience much more memorable. I like to tell people, I don't have this beautiful figure by not eating. I gotta eat a lot. I gotta eat often. It's always better when it's more convenient to eat. So this is the Romer One outside kitchen. It's sitting on a slide master. This slide system is designed and made for fire trucks and it's rated for a thousand pounds. 
and it locks in the out position. That slide mechanism is so strong and so robust that you don't need a leg or any type of support for this. Coming over to here, we have an 18,000 BTU Pit Boss grill and we decided to go with the griddle cooktop because when you get to camp, you just wanna throw your food on it and start cooking and eating. You don't wanna to have to deal with getting out pots and pans. Also, the weight, you add more weight to carrying and trying to store pots and pans. So we wanted just a cooktop where you could throw stuff on it. A lot of outside kitchens you'll see will have these two or three stovetop. Dometic is a really common one you see out in the market. The other issue that we've had with Dometic is just the BTUs is not very high output. Some of them are like four to 6,000 BTUs. So a two burner with a combined 18,000 BTU output is very, very good. We got in the other night for an off-roading adventure. Michael threw on four large steaks and it cooked really fast. You could fit six easily, eggs, pancakes. It's just convenient. All you need is a spatula and you can get to eating, which is really nice. This entire kitchen is 100% designed, dreamed up here at ROA Off-Road. Michael has spent probably 100 to 200 hours designing this kitchen. Now we did go out and look at a lot of kitchens because there are companies, Dometic for example, builds a lot of kitchens. A lot of people that are putting kitchens in their trailers are just importing them from China. And so there's a lot of options out there. We've put more than a thousand off-road trailers out in the market in the United States. And our experience, not just from us using it, but from the people that buy from us, our roamers, they tell us what they like, what they don't like. And so we were trying to find something that would check all the boxes and there just wasn't anything out there. So we just designed it ourselves. As you can see, we have some extra drawers here. You have two. So you can put your spatulas right here. We have a spice rack. Michael loves to cook, so he was very adamant about making sure it has a spice rack. And then this sink. You have the ability to have hot or cold water on this sink, and it is very deep. Most sinks on the outside kitchens we've used over the years, they're about half this deep, and they're really good for washing your hands. You can't really fill it up and put dishes in it. So we wanted to make sure that you could utilize this in every way. Now, this is a little bit high, but what's really cool is the suspension system on the Romer One allows you to be able to adjust the suspension, and as you can see, that's dropping down. You know, so if you're a little bit shorter, now you have it at a much easier to use height. Now I wanna show you something on the back of this, which may sound silly, but to me it's very important. This is the drain for the sink. Once again, like I said, we've used a lot of outside kitchens. A lot of them, they have a hole down here, and so the water just pours out on the ground splashes on your feet. We were at the beach and people were cooking and was, they forgot to bring a bucket and so it was just splashing all over them. And then there's like these accordion hoses that you kind of have to shove up in there. And it's actually kind of just an annoyance where you're getting under there and trying to find it and drag it out. And a lot of times people will put it down and they'll, you know, you're packing up and you say, hey, close up my kitchen and somebody slams it shut and just rips up all that stuff. This is recessed back here. So you're not gonna have that issue. And then the connection is a standard garden hose connection. And we gave you hoses in the back for your gray tank that you can plug in, which is a standard garden hose connection. And you can use that exact same hose for this kitchen right here. So you can plug that in to a hose and you can have it drain away from you and not have it fall right on the ground and make a muddy mess out here. And here at ROA, our goal, yes, we sell trailers, but our ultimate goal is not selling trailers, it's getting people to go out camping and having fun and enjoying this beautiful country. And so that's the design behind a lot of the things that we do with not having pans, with not having to deal with those things. The quick connects to hook up this kitchen are super, super simple. There's just the, the propane right here and then the water is actually inside on the other side of the trailer. So it's really easy to get it connected and get going. You're not dealing with all of these different connections and dangling wires out here that potentially will break off too if you don't take care of them. We've kind of made it very, very simple, but also very, very usable and also counter space. We wanted two spots for a good amount of counter space to be able to be prepping stuff. I put my spatulas here. I'm making my food, putting stuff here. Now you press this button right here to engage that lock and slide it back in. What I'm most amazed is that the team 
That ROA was able to fit that massive kitchen in this teeny little compartment. It really looks like a small compartment and there's a big kitchen in there. Now let's actually open up the awning and showcase how this works. As I mentioned before, it comes with this handy dandy little ladder. So you grab the ladder and unzip this awning and I'll show you how to set that up. It's pretty easy. And the cool thing is we've had this thing in 20, 30 mile per hour winds. We didn't have it set up when we were having those 50 mile per hour gusts, but we kind of wish we did because we wanted to see how well it held up. It's built by Overland Vehicle Systems and it's a pretty cool setup. So I'll show you how to set this thing up. One of the things I do want to point out is I'm six feet tall and I can reach this to unstrap it on the absolute lowest step. As you can see, this has two steps. So six feet, I can reach above the awning. You know, if I go all the way up here, I can touch the roof. So this ladder should be tall enough. Even if you're not six feet tall, you should be able to get up nice and easy. Now this little strap right here, I add a little bungee or a strap to it. And then I just pull this around and on the Romer 1, you can see right here, we've added a bracket that you can mount to. This bracket is rated for 2,000 pounds. And of course, you can hook that right there. And you can even loop it around again. And then you can have a triple connection right there. And then that's super tight, holding the awning all the way this way. Okay, so I'm just going to slide that in right there. And then we're gonna come right here. And of course, you can then loop it all the way through. And you mount it to this guy. And then you can loop it all the way around and have it double mounted. And then that's nice and tight. And there you have it. That's your 270 degree awning, which in a situation where it's sunny, rainy it's really nice to have out you can have still access to your storage compartment back here and all the way around in your entire trailer area this also has zippers and poles so it does have poles that come down that you can support and you could stake in and also zippers where you could make this into an entirely enclosed area and you can just order those from overland vehicle systems well there you have it pretty cool awning gives you a lot of coverage which is nicer than some of the ones that just come off the side of the wall but now i'm going to head up to the front and i'm going to grab the staircase and show you how that functions because that's a really cool unique setup too that i've never seen on any trailer on the market up to this point so let's head up there and check that out okay headed up front in this storage compartment and it is lockable as well let's open this up and get the stairs and we'll head inside and just wanted to point out some of this though right here they got this clipped in so this thing kind of rests right here there's a, enough space to put some stuff in the side i mostly have been putting like wheel chocks or just stuff that you're going to pull out when you're setting the trailer up itself so you can pull it out of the way and then pull your stairs out but it's getting a lot colder here we're pretty high elevation so i want to get inside so let me show you how this all goes it's pretty easy setup. This ladder, it's all aluminum, so it's very light. It goes into a hook right here. There are some pins that latch in there, so it holds it nice and tight. And then you can adjust these legs up and down, depending on where you're at. And I love how this entire step is removable because where we go, we tend to knock off stairs all the time. I think most people are not going to the places that we're going to be going to, but it's also nice just to have that peace of mind. You're never gonna be knocking those stairs off. Love this door too. This door is insulated, it's super thick. It seals very well, has a clip that holds it back. You got a nice little magazine rack. And then also there is a screen. Uh, and also the window here is dual pane and you also have a nighttime shade. The moment we've all been waiting for, let's head on inside because it is cold here and we're in the mountains. Welcome in 
inside. You know, the main reason why you buy a camper is for going to places like this and having these incredible views. Speaking of views out these windows, I do want to talk a little bit about the windows. I'm a huge fan. These have a bug screen right here. And you also have a nighttime shade. The back side of it is reflective for heat or sun. And they can clip up to each other so you can do half and half and have some shade on the can also go down and these windows they have a few different settings this is closed all the way if you go in a little bit there's actually a crack and that actually allows it for some air to come in of course you don't want to do that while you're off-roading otherwise dust will come in you can open it up like that the moment you hear that click you stop there's another one right there and another one right there and that creates a very nice breeze of course it's like 20 degrees outside so I don't want to breeze Let's shut those up. A lot of people have been asking what's the difference between the Roamer One and the X195. And I always like to say they're both phenomenal trailers. It's like a Mustang, right? This is the Shelby or Roush edition. There's definitely a bunch of things that we've done to the Roamer One that you're not gonna see on the X195. There's over 70 things that we've added to the Roamer One that you're not gonna see on the X195. So a lot of it is just extra goodies like towels with embossed or engraved Romer on it. You have this nice little cutting board with the Romer on it. So a lot of the things are gonna be little details. If you ask for a build sheet, it only shows maybe a couple dozen things added, but one of them's called soft goods. And in the soft goods package, it comes with premium bedding, pillows, towels. You also have shower towels and hand towels. So lots of little things. We also have a utility kit. So if you itemize it out, you're over 70 things. The biggest things you're gonna see are the outside kitchen and the upholstery. That's like right off the bat. Those are the main things you're gonna visually see. The Roma One, the emblem, right? The name, the badging, and the color of the trailer is gray. So we don't sell a gray X195. We only do green and tan. If you want gray, you go and move into the Roamer One with us here at our way. But lots of little details, you know, in the utility pack, we have all your hoses, but we also give you tools. So when you're out on the road and you need a tool, you need to check your tire lugs or whatever it is, you're kind of set up with everything you need. And the idea is we wanted to make this as turnkey as possible. So you're not dealing with the hassle of going out and trying to figure out where should I fit my silverware? Where should I fit my glasses? And where should I buy? And we've just tried to make everything set up so that when you come and you pick up the trailer, you're ready to go camping. That's it. You're ready to go camping. And to us, it's all about experience, right? And we want to make sure you have the best experience possible. And we're going to deliver a phenomenal experience, whether you buy a 195 or a Roamer One. But obviously the Roamer One, we wanted to go above and beyond what we've ever done. And we're also providing some after post sale service that you're not gonna get on any of our trailers, warranty and service. There's some things that we've kind of changed and tweaked so that you have a longer warranty and service through ROA Off-Road. And that's something that is also gonna be best in class that you're not gonna get anywhere else. Some of the things I wanna point out though, some of my favorite things are the silverware right here. On the trailers, you have these heavy duty latches now all imported from Europe and they're very strong. They're gonna lock in the compartment so they can't open. But here we have our silverware and everything fits in its spot. And of course it says Roamer on it. So lots of little details that make it just fun and unique unlike anything else on the market that you'll see. It's all built in, so this is, stays here permanently. And the nice thing is we give you the pots that work for the induction cooktop, so you don't have to go and try to figure that out. These are sometimes a pain in the butt to find if you're headed down to a store. I guess sometimes custom order them. Over here, we have some utensils for cooking above the sink area. A really fun setup here. You have your manuals and your books. They're all set up here. You know, most often trailers are just thrown in wherever they can throw them. We designed a spot for them to live, so you have a spot for them. We have our glasses, and you can see everything is engraved. And you have your coffee or hot chocolate mugs, all your plates that slide in. We've already tested off-roading. We're pushing 3,000 miles on-road, over 200 miles off-roading, and we've been doing Jeep trails like Moab with crazy amount of camber up and down and none of this stuff has fallen out or slid out And that's one of the things that as we've actually been designing it 
the first thing that we designed did actually, some stuff was falling out and broke. And so we actually took it back in and redesigned it and fitted it a little tighter with a more of a slant. And so our thought is if we can't make it fall out, you're not gonna make it fall out either. So we really tried to test these above and beyond what anybody else does. Moving back to this cabinet, we have put a little spot right here and thrown in a oven because there's no oven in it. So we wanted to give you a toaster oven and this you can just pull out and use it when you need to. And of course some pots and pans too here and everything does say Romer on it, which is really fun. Down here, I wanna point out a few things. And one of the things that I have mentioned is the tech. Obviously a lot of these boxes you can store. Some people like to keep their boxes, but you know, we wanted to make sure you had them when you pick up the trailer. But one of the things the trailers all come equipped with is the backup camera, which is I think very important. Also the level mate. We've tried to take out the hassle. It's all about the hassle in the trailer, right? These are things that you're gonna wanna install on other trailers. If you were to get an X195, technically you could do these yourselves. We are not doing these on the 195s here because we've agreed that what we're doing on the Roamer stays on the Roamer and the 195 comes the way it comes. So we're not doing those changeovers like we have in the past. But as an owner, you always have the right to do whatever you want. Of course, the tire pressure monitoring system comes standard. This will tell you your PSI, also will tell you the heat of the tires. So very important for safety. And then leveling, when you get to camp, it's just so easy to be able to, from your truck, you can pull out your phone and you can level it all out. Before you even get out of the trailer, you can level side to side, try to get it up and down. And then when you get out, obviously you make those little tweaks, those little adjustments, but it's really nice to have that on the fly as you're driving. And then of course you have some storage space, extra storage down here. Everything is locking latches and it also has the soft close. Moving under the sink, I wanna talk about one of my favorite things on the Roamer One, and it may seem silly, but I am shocked and how many manufacturers do not give you a standard trash can. And we've put a trash can in here and it slides on out. Easy to throw your trash in here. Another thing is not just the trash can inside, but we also have, it comes standard with a trash on the outside, on the back tire. We didn't have it when we were doing the walk around tour, but it does come standard with a trash -aroo. As silly as it may seem, if you never owned a trailer, you're always having an issue trying to find out where do I put trash. People are hanging bags, like trash bags on the doors. And then the trash bags inevitably, once they get full, they go outside and then you end up throwing them in the bed of the truck. And it's just kind of a nuisance. So you have your trash right here. Once this gets full, you can walk it out to the back, throw it in the trash room, and that's where your trash goes. And you don't need to like figure out where does my trash go? See, these are the details that you just don't get when you're buying a trailer, except for from ROA. We've tried to go into every single detail of what you're going to have to try to figure out yourself and do yourself, and we've tried to eliminate that. So it just becomes, essentially, you get the trailer and you go and camp. And I get it, some people might wanna do all of those things, and then the Roamer one's not for you. You can go get another trailer and do all those things yourselves. But some people, the reason why they buy a camper is so they can go and camp, not upfit it with stuff. That to me is the ideal person that just wants to get a trailer and go and camp and have fun and enjoy your experiences with the camper. The Roamer One really is the best thing for you. It's because we've set it all up that way. Lots of storage in here. And behind this panel, you have access to the back of the Nautilus system. And it's really easy to access this whole thing. Just a couple screws, four screws. Serviceability is also very important. Everything on the trailer is really, really easy to service and access. You have your SureFlow, and this is also a, an accumulator pump. Lots of trailers don't actually have an accumulator pump. And what this does is it essentially builds up pressure and and it makes the water, the flow of the faucets much more steady and consistent, but it also will make the water pump itself last longer because you're not putting as much pressure into this that builds it up and pushes and makes it go through. Of course, you have your inline filter. And then these right here are your covers for your actual sink. And let's move up to the sink and show you what we got on the sink. Now, if you want, you can put that right there and then you have a massive amount of counter space and there's two of these covers or you can stow those away underneath here. Now moving up to the sink. This is a really cool sink, very modular. It is also massive. You can pull this, this is kind of like a dry rack or you can cut your vegetables and like a strainer. And it's nice is because you don't have to bring an extra strainer with you on your camping trip. And then you have a big giant bowl here 
that has a little sink drain right there. So you can fill up this bowl to wash your dishes so you're not filling up this entire sink. Obviously, if you're at a campground and you have unlimited access to water, it's easy to be able to fill up the sink and wash your dishes. But if you're in a situation where you're like trying to conserve on your water, then you just fill up this little guy right here and you can you know, put your dirty dishes in here, soak them. And then when you're done soaking them, you obviously put them in this dry rack area. And of course you have a cutting board and it's engraved Romer on it as well. So really cool sink. You can put one of those covers up here and just utilize half the sink because it is a massive, massive sink. Lots of counter space on this trailer overall. And right here we have the induction cooktop and that works off of your electric inverter system. So you don't need to have propane, which I think is really important. I think a lot of campers are moving towards more electric. Now with lithium battery banks and solar, you can do more electric because gas and propane tends to be potential fire, right? So this is gonna eliminate that. You also have these really nice switches that turn on all your lights. Up here you have your lights along the entire counter area and you can actually press and hold and it will dim the lights as well. Or you can press and hold and it will get them bright again. You also have your water pump and your tank heaters. So the trailer comes equipped with the two 60 gallon fresh and gray tank and the actual furnace, the Truma furnace is ducted down into those cavities where those tanks are. So you have forced air heating those tanks up. I've been in the trailer negative five degrees with just the forced air going down there and the tanks didn't freeze. But obviously the trailer's rated for 40 below zero. If you get to the point where you're going somewhere where it's single digits or below zero even, that might be the time that you would actually turn on the tank heaters because there's also heater pads that are on the tanks and that would just give more heat to those tanks and they are thermostat regulated, so they'll turn off once they get to a certain temperature. But you don't really need that in most cases. The forced air is gonna be plenty of heat down there. One of the things that I love about the trailer is the forced air, the heat all through the entire trailer. It's all along the walkways. And a lot of trailers, I notice you walk on the floors and it's very, very cold because obviously a trailer, it's open underneath the trailer. It's not like a house where you have a foundation. So wind can blow under there and it can really get the trailer cold. With the placement of all the heat ducts along the entire floor, this floor stays warm. People will put rugs and slippers and I've been on this barefoot a lot in extremely cold temps and the floor stays nice and warm. But moving over here to the fridge area. So it is a isotherm. This company is from Italy. I love these metal latches. You can slam the fridge and it doesn't break. You'd be surprised how many things are plastic latches. Fridge freezer, you have just under seven cubic feet of fridge and freezer. You can also turn these on independently. So you can just turn on the fridge or just the freezer. I don't know why you would do just the freezer, but you know, if you're not using the freezer, you don't have to turn on the freezer. And this is a lot of space. These refrigerators are also extremely efficient. You're using one to three amps per hour when they're running. So very, very efficient fridges. These are originally made for the yachting industry. So you'll see these in hundred million dollar yachts, isotherm. And these fridges are designed to be on 45 degree angles, getting jostled in the ocean back and forth. As far as any fridge <laughs> out there on the market, this is gonna be one of the best made in Italy. Moving down from the fridge, I wanted to show this slide out tray for some extra spice racks or food or whatever you wanna pack in here. Lots of storage space and nice soft clothes as well and locking. Underneath the fridge, we have the Truma furnace and this pops out right there. And this is your Combi Plus unit. This is a three stage. So it goes all the way from 7,000, 14,000 up to over 20,000 BTUs of forced heating. This will make this trailer extremely warm. I have ran the heat for almost a month, 24 days in the winter on those two propane tanks, which is just superb. The water capacity, it's just over two and a half gallons of hot water and it's super efficient, turns on, and I'll show you how some of the functions work in a little bit. 
because they're really, really nice. This Truma, it's a company out of Germany, actually named after Harry Truman, our president. Just after the war, they actually asked if they could name the company after our president. And he said, sure. And they've always been one of the most innovative air conditioning, heating companies on the market, relatively new to the United States. And Imperial has been very innovative in putting some of the best components that you can get year to date. Okay, moving to the air conditioning unit. It is a Dometic and it is a 12 volt system. So it does not run off of shore power or 120 volts. This purely runs off of the battery bank, which is pretty cool for a lot of reasons. It's a 6,824 BTU unit, so some people might be a little concerned about the size of it. Now, we have turned on this AC unit in the Romer 1. The furnace actually kicked on, got it to 100 degrees inside, and then turned this on and got it down to 63 or 64 degrees, if I recall correctly. And that was within an hour times. Heating it really high up to 100 degrees in 30 minutes and then we cranked this on and within an hour it brought it down all the way to 63 degrees. So that's pretty good testament and the reason why is because the walls are so so thick on this trailer like as far as insulation it's best in class but this does have some cool functionality to it. You can do some timers, you can put it on boost mode which it cools it off faster or eco. Very very efficient and another neat thing about 12 volt AC unit, it would be impossible if you didn't have the battery bank that this trailer has. 1,080 amp hours of lithium battery. If you didn't have that, this AC unit would not be possible. The neat thing about it being through the battery is it actually gives you a lot more flexibility in generators. Because a lot of times if you have those big AC units, you have to actually get a 3,500 watt generator and those are extremely heavy generators. The reason is because a standard 13,000 BTU AC unit, which is what you're gonna get on most trailers this size, but you need that because the walls are so thin and the insulation is not that good. So you're gonna need a larger AC unit to fire up and when you get to high elevation, that generator can't power up the AC unit because of the high elevation and charge the batteries. Luckily, you can get a smaller generator and all you need to do is charge the batteries because the batteries are what's giving power to the air conditioning system. So the only reason why you would get a generator for this trailer is to pretty much charge the batteries. That's the only reason why is because everything else is running through the battery system. And that's very different from most trailers. It's very innovative and not like most trailers on the market that you're gonna see. Moving over here, we have, of course, the TV. And this does swivel out in a lot of different directions. So you can be on the bed, you can be on the booth over here, even comes out. And we've designed it to come off the mount really easily. While you're in transit, you can store it on the bed. That's what we are recommending people to do. It is a smart TV too, so it can stream anything on it. Obviously we include the Starlink system setup, so you can be able to plug in your Starlink, and the second you plug in your Starlink, you can have this set up to internet, and then it will be able to just automatically play Netflix, Hulu, whatever you do, YouTube TV, so you can watch the games, or lots of people are like, why do you have TV while you're camping? I get it. The idea is to be outside hiking and exploring, but sometimes it's raining. And the other issue for me personally is when it gets late at night and it's cold sometimes my little girl wants to come in and be warm and it's really easy for us to throw on a movie for her and the adults hang out at the campfire later i'm talking 9 10 11 p.m you can be out there and she can be in here warm and get ready for bed and it's just fun to have the option the next thing i want to talk about is this bed one of the main reasons why i have a camper is for a comfortable bed if i'm out camping and I am hiking all day long or doing stuff outside, I wanna come in and I wanna to go to sleep and I wanna sleep good. We spend almost more time in bed than any other place in our life. Sometimes eight, actually I sleep on average six hours. My ring said that I slept on average six hours all last year, but I try to get seven or eight here or there. So you spend a lot of time in the bed and I'm always shocked in how so many manufacturers don't put in comfortable beds in general. In the Romer one, we put in standard standard, a 10 inch memory phone, like a Tempur-Pedic style bed. And the shop, I think I'm driving them crazy because they have ordered like 
five mattresses in the last month or so. And I've been like sleeping on them, testing them out. As we've been going out camping, I've been throwing them in, trying different sizes. I mean, mattresses are a lot of matter of opinion. In most cases, people are like, oh, all campers give you terrible mattresses. That's just the first thing you do is you go buy a new mattress. And I just thought to myself, that's silly. That's annoying. Why would we want people to have to buy a trailer and immediately go and get a new mattress? So we just wanted to include a very, very comfortable mattress to start with. Obviously, all this bedding comes with it too. This is a feather down comforter. You have nice satin, comfy pillows, nice sheets. Everything is included. Everything you see is included because once again, the idea is just to get out and enjoy and have fun and camp and sleep well, not wake up with aches in your back. We wanted you to sleep really, really comfortably. And that's why we chose this mattress. Moving over here, I also wanted to point out these reading lights. Very nice for nighttime. If you want to press and hold, you also get a blue light and it's a little bit darker at night so you don't disturb people. Another thing that I want to point out is when you shut all the blinds and turn off all the lights, it's pitch black in here. There's no little lights that are shining at night. Everything has the ability to completely turn off. Even the backlit switches have the backlighting. There's a button that disengages or turns off the backlighting so you can sleep in the dark, complete dark on a comfortable mattress and really wake up and be refreshed and be able to go out and have fun and go camping. The next thing I wanna show off is the actual storage up here. And because the bed is walk around, you can come right up to here and put your stuff in. You got storage on both sides. This cabinet over here has a bunch of shelves and this one over here has one of my favorite things. Right here you have a safe and obviously you can put a gun in there uh, if you don't have a gun and you don't use guns you can also pull this out and then you can just stash maybe your wallet or some keys or stuff in there it is a biometric so you can actually put your thumbprint on it obviously i'm not set up we have the code set up so you can just press the code and it will open you have storage in here and here also on the other side down below here we have outlets 220 volt outlets and then also you have two usb plugs so you can plug in your cell phone chargers and then of course you have lights and the lights turn on the main lights in the entire trailer and if you press and hold them they can also dim and you have that on both sides so you have your outlets on both sides your cell phone chargers on both sides and also light switches up along here you have a little bit of storage you know where you can put some stuff Okay, over by the door side of the bed, you have your fire extinguisher for safety. And you have a broom. Comes with the trailer. Has a little dustpan right here, which is very cool. This broom, it's one of my favorite brooms that you can buy. Actually extends. So it's a regular size broom to uh, sweep the floors and it goes really compact and goes into its little place that it lives mounted right there on the wall. We've done a lot of off-roading and that thing stays nice and put. It's all about the details. People don't realize when they buy the trailer, they don't realize how much work is going to come after to figure these things out. Moving up here, we got our smoke alarm, all of our electronic control systems. Of course, the Truma, our inverter, our monitor to monitor what's happening and then our solar charge controllers they are mppt solar charge controllers and there's three banks one of the things that's really important is the trailer comes stock with 1240 watts of solar and 1080 amp hours of lithium battery there's three different solar banks and they go to three separate solar chargers i don't want to get too technical into the details for people that just want to know what's on the trailer, that is what's there, but they are wired separately. So if you did have an issue with one solar bank, you're not gonna lose your entire solar array, which is really good. We've been off-roading, we've put mud on the roof, we've had snow on the roof, and you know we've cleaned off half of the battery bank in the front from standing up there, and we still had solar going. Some solar arrays, depending on how they're wired, and if it's all going through one system, if you cover a part of the panel, the entire system goes down. Or if you break one panel, the whole system can go down. So it's a redundancy. Essentially, there's three ways to get power off grid through your solar system. Do wanna talk a little bit about some of these components too as well. Okay, here we are with the Truma system. And this thing works your forced air. It also works your hot water system. You can go eco hot or boost. And then also 
you have your option to run it off of gas mix, which would be about 900 watts of electricity and gas, or you can mix two and go up to 1800 watts, or you can go to pure electric one or two. Obviously, if you're parked at a campground and you're plugged in and you have electricity, you might as well just go and heat the trailer off of electricity. If you're off grid, you're really going to want to stay on gas because that's the most efficient. You can choose your vents so you can get some airflow. So you can go down here and turn your heat off completely. Turn your water heater off. If it's a summer and you want to just get some airflow in here, you click on vent and it has 10 different speeds. So it's a variable and it works the same with your actual heat. When you turn your heat on, and it heats up the trailer. If you put it on boost, it's going to go on full blast. But as the temperature gets completely warm inside the trailer, the fan speeds will go a lot slower until you almost don't even hear the fans going. Sometimes you'll have to go and put your hand by the vent to see if there's heat coming out. But it's just a very, very, very minimal amount of heat. The nice thing about this is the amperage and the watts that you use to operate this heater system is close to none when it's on a very, very low speed. So it will heat up really fast and then just trickle a little warm into the trailer into the cabin love love this truma system definitely one of the best systems on the market and then moving over here we have our go power this is your inverter system or your charger so if you're plugged in you can operate everything over there moving over to the battery monitoring system this is really cool as you can see it tells you your voltage your total battery bank which is 1,060 amp hours right now. We're at 94%, which says 99 hours of usage, which is a lot of usage. We're currently pulling seven amps and we're gaining this wattage from the solar. And that's pretty incredible. If you come over to the battery, the MPPT solar charge controller, it says that we're getting about 110 watts, a little bit of variation or seven amps coming into the batteries from the solar. And that's on a cloudy day. The sun is not out right now and we're getting charged. We have all the lights on right now. So look, if you come right here, it says that we're running eight amps. So I'm gonna turn off all the lights in the trailer really quick. And you'll see we're using negative one amp. The fridge, the bathroom lights are still on. So there's still some things that are making this go down. Now it just turned to plus. So now we're actually gaining power on a cloudy day. Just pretty incredible. Right here, we have the switch and this turns on the light bar. The cool thing is it does have that little light that illuminates. So the other night I was in bed and I noticed that light was on and I was like, oh, the light bar must be on. Sounds silly, but a lot of trailers don't actually illuminate the light. So you don't know if it's on without poking your head out the window or something. So nice little detail. Now we're gonna go under the bed and lift this up here. We have a little storage compartment that we've added. You know, you could put sheets, something thin here, maybe some extra blankets, just give you a little bit more storage space. Back over here, we have a laundry hamper that's included. So you have a place to put your laundry. This is kind of similar to the trash idea. It always is frustrating when you have no place to put your trash. It's equally frustrating when you have no place to put your laundry. So we really wanted to make sure all of this was set up. Down here, we also have a spot where you can plug in your Starlink and you have your Starlink cable that comes in. So your Starlink kind of lives right here next to your bedding area. So there's your actual connection. So when you have your Starlink modem, you just plug it in here. And so when you get to camp, all you're doing is putting the dish out and you have your modem plugged in underneath the trailer at all times. Over in the Go Power uh, inverter compartment, you have your solar charge controllers, your MPPT solar charge controllers. You also have a battery disconnect that completely shuts everything off in here. So when you're in storage mode, you also have your inverter charger controller with 2000 watt inverter. Some people will say that's not a lot of power, but the reality is you're not running much stuff through this inverter because your air conditioner runs off a of 12 volt your fridge is most of the trailer is running off a of 12 volt over here you do have a secondary charger system and the reason why this was installed is in case you ever had a situation where this system were to fail you have a backup it's just a redundancy it is also designed for cold weather if you're somewhere where it's extremely cold and you were to have an issue with your batteries because they got too cold or it's in storage and you want to wake them up you would turn this on and you can function the entire trailer through this system the whole the 12 volt the furnace and everything will run through this system and bypass this system in the battery bank so it's just a secondary system to make it sure you don't get stranded in places 
pieces. I don't want to get too much into the details of it, but we will in another video. But that's kind of a little detail that you don't know you need it until you need it. And we have it there for you. Moving under here, we have the actual battery bank. And these things are amazing. As you can see, you have heat ducts running under here. So it keeps the battery compartment warm. If you know anything about lithium, that's very, very important. And then also you have these 360 amp hour lithium battery banks. Unbelievable system. They're all mounted to the floor very securely. So when you're off-roading, you're not gonna have any issues. But there is your battery bank, which is massive. Welcome to one of my favorite parts of the Roamer one trailer. This booth area is massive. It is a lot bigger than it might look in the videos. It's a very comfortable booth, over six feet long when you turn it into a bed. Our camera guy's 6'2", and he has a few inches above his head. It's closer to 6'5", from end to end, when it's made into a bed. The upholstery, it's a premium marine grade leather, so it is washable, but it feels very, very nice. We use this company, it's a local company here in Utah. We've been using them for a decade on motor coaches. When we sold million dollar motorhomes, we would use them to do a lot of the leather upholstery or reupholstery on the trailers or the motorhomes. So we're using them locally and in-house. We put this together four inches thick with a memory phone inside. It's very, very comfortable. This is a very plush, nice filling booth and that's to me really important because the main reason why i get a camper is for comfort i want a comfortable bed i want a comfortable area to sit down if you're playing cards and games on a cold night or a rainy day you can put easily four adults in this area and play at the table you can eat and enjoy each other's company this booth also we've extended out the bottoms where you can rest your leg on it so your legs not just actually cantilevered so you have a lot of support. So if you are on the road and you're working full time, you want to be able to have that support on your leg while you're on the computer all day long. You don't want your leg hanging out. This upholstery upgrade is over $2,000. So we're using a very good quality materials and putting it all together. One thing that I want to point out is I love how inside we kind of did the same type of decals on the outside, but on the inside we went from the black to gray decals instead of gray and black and you can see over there it has kind of like the same angles where it drops down just like you see on the outside and this does turn into a bed like i mentioned this table drops down and it's on a hydraulic system where it just pushes down this to me is one of the most important things when you're just hanging out and especially if you're working on the road and you're traveling long distance we tend to take in trailers all the time from our roamers that buy a trailer and they don't like the standard booth that was there and we reupholstered and made them thicker and made them wider or longer and we wanted to do this in the roamer one we wanted just to have it standard right off the get-go where you have a nice comfortable place to relax and underneath the seats we actually also have storage cubbies that you can pull these cushions off and you'll have some actual storage space underneath here you can lift that up and get to some access to there and then also you have the entire length and then you have all of this cabinet space these are massive cabinets with the hydraulic lifts which is very nice for you to hold the doors up and then of course these locking latches over here we have a bluetooth speaker that slides out and you can go and set this outside and connect it to your phone it charges on the port right here and it actually sounds really good and i've never had that come loose while off-roading and we've done some crazy off-roading on the other side of this speaker i want to point out the switches because i really like these switches they're a european style switch and everything's labeled it's silly to think like obviously but a lot of trailers don't label their stuff but you have your outside porch your ceiling and this right here i mentioned earlier about how the backlighting this actually if you push it turns off the backlight at night so it's not blinding you or keeping you up at night double press these you turn all the lights on and if you double press those you turn them all off you can see that little circle with the x in it and then the circle turns them all on the two and everything's dimmable okay let's head on back to my favorite part of the camper and we can talk a little dirty in the bathroom about the toilet of course or we can uh, talk about getting clean in the shower whatever you prefer let's first talk about the 
toilet over here. With the door open, it's a little bit tight, but once you close the door, you have a lot more space in here. And there's a nice little latch back here, so it holds the door nice and secure while you're off-roading. You just pull that, and it comes undone, and it has a uh, nice friction hinge. We actually have some videos on this toilet. It's a pretty cool toilet. It's a dry flush by Lavio, and essentially there's no black tank in this trailer, which is really important if you're going off-grid and you don't wanna to to dump your sewage. So these cartridges, they can allow anywhere from 10 to 25 flushes, depending if you use the pea powder that it comes with. But very, very cool systems. To me, the age of black tanks is coming to an end, hopefully, especially for off-road trailers. And we also have a little toilet paper holder here, which <laughs> surprisingly, lots of manufacturers don't put toilet paper holders on them. But we got one in here, which is convenient to do your business with, right? Now, this is a tight space, I will tell you. I'm 240 pounds, six feet tall, but like it's not too tight that I'm not able to use it. Our other camera guy, he also used it and he's probably like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and closer to 300 and some change. And I mean, he used it, right? You're out camping, it's functional. And it's funny because some people have complained. They say the bathroom is too big. I guess it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. The bathroom is very, very comfortable. Also, we have a towel bar up here, and that's a Romer One exclusive. Yeah, over here, we have a beautiful porcelain sink, of course, and down below it, lots and lots of storage. You have three drawers here, and then this one just drops down and you have some space, maybe toilet paper. Same with over here, you have a good amount of space. This is very deep at a foot. One of the nice things is this has a lip, so it actually goes in and drops down. So you're not gonna have stuff banging around in there and it will hold it in. But everything is locking too, so you're not gonna have to worry about that anyway. And you have another drawer. And then this one is pretty thin, but it's big enough where you can put your refill cartridges for the toilet right there. Very nice mirror. And it's a good height. I mean, I can see myself nice and clear in here. Some mirrors, it's funny, we used to have a trailer and the mirror was like right here. So you had to like crouch to see yourself. Now, let's talk about the shower. It's pretty comfortable in here. When that door shuts too, you have your towel right outside it so you can reach it. Everybody always wants to know, if I drop a bar of soap, can I pick it up? Well, if I dropped a bar of soap, I could bend down and I could pick it up. No problem. If you're not as flexible as me, then you could always just sit down on this bench and then reach down and pick it up. So I love this bench because it gives you the ability to, you ladies out there, shave your legs or just get lathered up and turn on and off the water and relax in here. With the RV with 60 gallons of water, you wanna be a little bit smart about your water consumption. And it does have a high efficiency flow shower and it gives you different settings that you can have lower flow or higher flow. Above me is the fantastic vent fan. These things are amazing. They send out a lot of airflow and you can actually reverse the fan to have it bring air into the trailer or suck air out. If you open one of the windows, it creates a really good cross breeze. And like I said, very, very good airflow with these. You also have auto setting so you can turn it on with the temperature setting. And if it gets to a certain temperature inside, like if you leave dogs in here, it gets a little too warm, it will automatically turn on and start cooling it down and recirculating the air. Love these, these are really high end, top of the line vents for your trailer. Okay, and down on the floor, there's a nice wood teak floor and there's a shower pan underneath it. As you can see, it's a little wet in here because my camera guy accidentally took a shower as I was sitting on the toilet a second ago. <laughs> you just the Sorry. <laughs> you just bumped the shower. Oh boy. But there you have it. It's a very nice, comfortable shower. And of course you have your shower door that folds into this area and closes it off while you're actually showering. And there you have it. The all new Romer One, manufactured by Imperial Outdoors exclusively for ROA off-road. Super excited about this trailer. We have taken it off-roading. We've gone down to Moab, we've been in the snow, we got stuck in a winter storm, we've been mudding. We've done some pretty crazy, insane stuff and the trailers have been holding up very, very well. Nothing's without problems, but the great thing about the Romer One and what you're going to experience that you won't experience with any other trailer because our name is on it, so we're gonna stand behind it. The ROA up there, <laughs> before the MER stands for RVs of America or ROA Off-Road. 
and we're gonna stand behind this trailer and really take care of everybody who ever gets one of these trailers. It really is a phenomenal trailer. I'm so excited for you to see it. If you wanna see one in person, because the videos never do it justice, it's so important to actually come, walk through one, see it. You can see one at our Experience Center in South Carolina, just outside of Greenville, or you can see one here in Utah. We're just south of Salt Lake City, about 45 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Like I said, there's a lot of differences. There's almost 70 things on this trailer that you're gonna get when you buy it that you don't on any other trailer that we have. They're exclusive to the Romer one. But once again, thanks for watching. Check out some of our adventure videos and hopefully I'll see you on an adventure soon. A Romer adventure that is.